do you know how hard it's going to be to avoid doing a terrible Solid Snake impression through this whole video? Every time I say Metal Gear, I'm going to want to go... Metal Gear. If you're into video games enough to watch a channel all about Famicom games, you probably already know that this is the bad version of Metal Gear. The game was originally created for the MSX computer, and the Famicom port was done with no input from Hideo Kojima, the game's creator. Konami added a bunch of new areas to drag out the playtime, rearranged some stuff, though that sometimes broke the scripting, removed the eponymous nuclear missile-wielding mech Metal Gear. Cutting Metal Gear from Metal Gear is a decision so weird that the only conclusion I can come to is that there was a programming problem with it, and they couldn't resolve it before they had to get the game out the door so that it could reach stores in time for the holiday shopping season. Replacing Metal Gear with a stationary computer just reeks of a solution that could be coded up in a few hours. The story of this game is given on the box. Outer Heaven is the name of a heavily armed land in the depths of southern Africa where the dreadful weapon called Metal Gear is developed. It is the mission of Solid Snake, one of the members of the secret army Foxhound, to sneak into Outer Heaven and destroy Metal Gear. Go ahead, Solid Snake. You know, I had forgotten that Metal Gear takes place in Southern Africa. Given that it's set in the mid-80s, that is a troubling decision to set it there. It's too much to go into for a video about Metal Gear. But the short version is that in the 1980s, there were a lot of militaristic white supremacists who wanted to re-establish the apartheid state there. I think it's safe to assume that it was put into Kojima's mind from articles about mercenary adventures, and he didn't really know about the rest of the context. But still, not the best choice to set a game there. When the game starts, Solid Snake is parachuted into the jungle. The only equipment he carries with him is his trusty pack of cigarettes. And that's one of the big gameplay aspects of Metal Gear. Snake has to find all of his own equipment on site. He can always engage in CQC with the guards, but to deal with tougher situations, he'll need firearms, explosives, and an enormous array of tools to deal with the traps around the fortress. This room has gas jets, for example, so you have to find a gas mask first. Or this control panel has electrified this floor, and you have to use a guided missile to take it out. The game world of Metal Gear consists of individual screens that are linked together, and this is one of the biggest problems with it. Every location resets when you leave the screen, including if you do something like use binoculars to look ahead a screen. Or get into a truck that's on that same screen. Snake is supposed to be on a sneaking mission, creeping up on enemies and taking them out silently before he's spotted. These screen resets mean that you'll often wind up in situations where you cannot avoid being spotted. Hopefully you take out the alerted guards before more reinforcements arrive, but that's not always viable. This problem can occasionally work in your favor, as items that aren't unique will respawn when you re-enter a room. So you can refill your life and fill up your inventory with life-restoring rations, or collect as much ammunition as you need. A few more sneaking techniques that can help you are that cameras can't spot you if you're directly underneath them, except apparently when you exit this door. And Snake's most useful item, the cardboard box, makes an appearance. While under it, enemies can't spot him unless he moves. To access your items, you hit select to bring up the menu, and the top option is for weapons, the second option is for items, and the final option is for the radio transceiver, which you use to communicate with people and get hints. Punching is always on the B button, and whatever weapon you have selected is always on the A button. The rest of the items are just used automatically. Should you get a game over in Metal Gear, you're sent all the way back to the beginning, though you do retain your inventory. That's actually what got me to stop playing. There's rooms in this game where it's instant death if you wander into them unprepared, and it's just no fun to go back to the start, and then you have to go through the very long walk back to wherever it was that you died. 
you basically have to play through the whole first section of the game over and over again. And it's not like it becomes any easier. You won't want to waste your equipment going through those areas, and that just makes it feel even more repetitive. If you can rescue enough hostages, that'll increase your rank which comes with an increase in the life bar. But that is a very slow process. Of course, Metal Gear winds up getting a lot of sequels. One of which was on the NES, but not the Famicom. So we won't be seeing Snake's Revenge in this project. As for this Metal Gear, I want to like it. It's a distinctive action game for the platform, but man those rough edges are really rough. When you figure out how to sneak through a room and take out all the guards without being spotted, that's fun and cool. When you're suddenly forced into alert just because you've exited a room, that's not fun. Accumulating a stockpile of weapons so that you're ready for anything, that's cool. Having to take advantage of a poorly designed system to build up your ammo, that's not fun. I feel like all of the good things in Metal Gear are imported from a far better version of the game, and all of the bad things are a direct consequence of a rushed Famicom port. And in that case, why play the worse version?